wow, look at that. Look at that. Like, I could, like, like, saw something apart with this. Yeah, they got the top of that card real good here. Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with another Premium Gold opening. Now last time we actually looked at the Korean OCG version to look at things like this gorgeous kind of 3D embossed Dark Magician and of course the giant oversized card that we ended up getting for that special set as well. Those videos I'll leave in the top right corner but the reason I have them here today is I wanted to compare them to our TCG version of maximum gold. I have a display box here. I do want to open some of the stuff just, you know, off to the side with my brother uh, so we can kind of enjoy that. And I didn't want to go and open my entire display box and then just have nothing else to do. But maximum gold is a pretty special set to me considering uh, not only did the OCG get a version of it prior to our official release, so I, got, I kind of got a little preview of it that way, but uh, premium gold, the original premium gold, was the very first product that I opened here on JD Gaming. It was the very first video on the entire channel, and so it has that little bit of nostalgic value, right? It's this nice, good memory of kicking everything off. And uh, I have some bad memories with uh, Premium Gold as well. Return of the Bling, or the Infinite Gold, actually, the uh, big red one. Actually, wow, this is a big box. It's bigger than what I remember for the other ones, but like, I remember trying to open one and I like cut my thumb. I don't even remember which one now, so it's all healed up, but like, it was a pretty scary thing uh, that happened off camera, so uh, good and bad memories there, but uh, we'll go ahead and open at least a couple of these. Maybe I'll open three of these. There's uh, five of them in here. At the very end of the video, I'll do like a recap of everything that I pulled from two display boxes, so we'll be able to see, you know, what the, you know, you know what kind of cards you may pull here. This is kind of interesting on the back here, if you want to read that, talks about things like uh, the cards glowing like pools of Precious Molten Metal, um, advertisement for Dual Links and such, and this set is uh, pretty interesting in that it comes with two guaranteed premium gold rares, and then I think it's like five or so regular gold letter rares, so um, yeah, they're doing new variants on a lot of these things now. I was expecting this to kind of open up as a flap. Oh, it does open up as a flap, as it did in the past, but they have this uh, piece of plastic here, and uh, yeah, um... I don't know if you guys have heard or seen, there are a lot of misprints with this set, and already I can kind of see, uh, even without misprints, the cards might be damaged in there, but uh, we're going to go ahead and see what this is all about, and again, we'll compare it to what we've already seen. This is the exact same kind of information as usual. Seven cards in each pack, two and five, yeah, so I was right there. It looks like if you guys were keeping up with the leaks way back when, uh, those were true. Let me see if I can figure out... Okay, I think the gold rares are on the back, just based on field. Lost World, and that looks really cool just because of the fact that it is gold letter that you would have in an ultra rare. So, uh, very nice to see that. We got Gear Gigant X. I've always wanted to pick this thing up. I never got around to it, and uh, now I have it in my hands. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Nice. I love this artwork. I said it in the Korean opening for this thing. I don't know. What, what about it? I think it's just a really cool composition having the entire artwork there, entire character on there. Overall, how does it look? Honestly, I will say it looks slightly changed cheaper than the OCG version, personally. It's, it's a little harder to tell on camera, um, but a little easier to just feel in person, but not bad. Uh, I will say, as long as they are printed properly like this, this is quite nice. Um, let me make some room here, so I'm able to go ahead and continue the opening, and uh, our... Oh! Did they have another gold later? That's pretty cool. Starlight Junction. We got number 74, Master of Blades. And we got Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring with the original artwork as well. That looks kind of cool there. Go ahead again, do a recap of all the gold rares at the end. But you can see how glossy it is in the artwork, in the text box, but not in like the you know counter to the card itself. Level stars are 3D as well. The card is 3D. That looks really cool. Did not pull this thing in that other version, so very nice. And Deep Prison, a nice throwback. The upgraded Sakuretsu armor, one that's been very influential when it was played, like early synchro era and such, so very nice to see there. We got Coach Soldier Wolfbark, almost said Kof Soldier. We got Cyber Dragon Core, always nice to see here. Synchron Carrier, if I'm not mistaken. Stardust Charge Warrior, uh, finally not a gold secret rare, but honestly, um, I will say these premium golds with how shiny they are um, almost look like those fake cards. Not in a bad way necessarily, but I would say like if I hadn't played Yu-Gi-Oh in the last few years and hadn't kept up with this product and suddenly some guy showed me this card, I'd be like, bro, that, that's fake, right? Like, <laughs> that doesn't look like a real card exactly. Um, 
But nonetheless, uh, it's finally an alternative rarity to that gold secret rare. I think that gold secret may actually be better than this premium gold uh, for this card specifically. But wait. Oh. The, okay, two gold rares in a row. So are the packs just shuffled up? So far, no, like, heinous misprints or anything. But that does look really cool there, I, I gotta say. Um, I still think I like the older cards personally, but maybe these will grow on me. Tuning, nice reprint there as a rare. And Graffa, this reminds me of those Duelist League cards where they have like the different uh, color names. Yeah, they, they were rares for the uh, Konami editions. We have Dragon's Mirror. We have, oh, I accidentally, are they just in random spots? That's really cool actually, if that's the case. Uh, Monster Reborn, uh, my favorite absolute favorite monster born still that korean ultimate rare but this gold one is pretty nice as well you can see just like the outline embossed texture on the card that looks really really nice i think the thing that turns me off the most of these cards is how ultra shiny the text box is and what i mean by ultra shiny is like just like the picture of the ultra rares right like you see a rainbow i think that counter being uh that color kind of just makes it feel off I will say they are the highest quality looking cards I've ever seen. Just with the depth of technology, it, it just feels like it'd be hard to play a deck full of these, right? Fire Formation, Goko. We got Eldlich, the Golden Lord. Very nice. One of the cards no one really thought would be reprinted in this set, and uh, here it was. They thought the leak was fake with that 69 card total, and then this guy being in there. Man, we were all wrong. Yeah, Mage Power and Hidden Temples of Necro Valley for a couple more spells. This is a lot of fun. Despite the fact that I'm kind of, uh, I'm not, oh, you can see already, the cards are crimped here, and only, like, a couple of them are, so I'm gonna laugh if my gold rares are the only ones. Nope. Uh, we got Union Hanger. I don't know what all the cards are in this set, so this is kind of nice to see, and I like that factory crimping, actually, so I'll kind of set that to the side. Not exactly a misprint, necessarily. Some people might. Barrier Statue. Transco Talker. Um, we got Zodiac Drident. Man, this card just, like, oh my gosh, this... <laughs> it doesn't look real to me, guys. I'm just being honest here. We got Cosmo Town, so uh, two gold rares in a row. Speedroid Red Eye Dice, and then we got the Prime Monarch as well. And um, it looks like Cosmo Town here is the crimped card, so that's kind of neat that one of our gold rares ended up being that way. Actually, this one's kind of like that to the Dryden't. So yeah, I'll hang on to those to the side. So that's one box here. I'm going to go ahead and tidy things up, and we'll go ahead and open another one. I think uh, the cards in here are pretty darn sweet. I think if I see like a Blue Eyes or Dark Magician, I'll be a lot more stoked because those more being collectibles, I think work really well with this type of special rarity. But when I first saw this rarity, I thought it would be more of an extra deck card, maybe, if that, uh, or just as a collectible. But here we are. We have Mech Knight of the Morning Star. Interesting. We got a reprint of that. Uh, Dark Lord Ixchel. We got Elemental Hero Stratos. Uh, perspective is uh, you are the hero now. Interesting Ultra Art. Not my cup of tea, personally, just because I love the original Stratos so much. But it is very cool that they gave him this artwork. And I think it really works where they give that gold foil outline to really make him pop out of that card. That's a good way of doing it there. We got, oh, <laughs> I, I started dropping Gyoko here, but uh, man, we got one of these. We got Red Eyes Black Dragon. This is the first copy I have now, I believe, with Red Eyes Black Dragon and not B Dragon. They did recently reprint it that way, but um, yeah, like comparing this, for example, to the Dark Magician from the Korean version, like you could see the Korean version has that kind of foil on the entire card and it just doesn't feel as like I don't know like kind of like half baked almost like you could see the Korean one is like all out it almost feels like they held something back in the TCG part of it might be just the difficulty of doing this on a larger scale than in the OCG obviously and it's still very good it just looks like this is a cheaper feel than this even though they feel like they're supposed to be the same thing um, if that makes sense here so uh, I'm still leaning towards not my favorite rarity but it's still cool we have set rotation nice to see that been a while and then Lady D bug then we got Another three packs, I think. Two packs? Yeah, two packs left in uh, this box here. So we'll go ahead and make the most of those. Got Dark Lord Contact. I think this is a Monster Reborn. Yeah, in defense position. Trap Tricks Dianea. Always nice to see Trap Tricks here. We got Herald of the Arc Light. This was one I thought would be very cool with this gold scheme and the you know, rainbow kind of foil on top of its artwork being rainbow. As of now, I'm leaning more towards maybe I like them less than I thought I would. Uh, we have Condemned Witch. This is the thing that searches your Forbidden Droplet if you're willing to normal summon this. We got Infinite Impermanence. Probably the best card in the set, at least for the time being. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I think the alternate arts are very cool. 
So I'm personally not hunting for impermanence exactly, but very, very nice to see at least one of those. And we got uh, the big super dimensional robot galaxy destroyer rank 10 guy who needs three monsters in order to summon. Oh, I was wrong. We do have uh, two more packs. So that's cool. One bonus in addition to everything. Trade in here. We got Flame Bufferlo. We got Artifact Lancia, always a nice nice card and i will say this because i'm just noticing this here when you have a stack of these gold rares that effect looks very nice just like along the edge there like that looks clean these cards just feel feel different i feel like they'd be a little little uh heftier maybe but yeah we got condemned witch again and madolche knights the counter trap card interesting and uh looks like this card's crimped as well we got a zodiac chacanine with a really really deep crimp there um let me see uh no other cards in this set but yeah wow look at that look at that like i could like like saw something apart with this yeah they got the top of that card real good here so no like terrible misprints on my end thus far but uh lots of packaging errors there so kind of interesting we'll, we'll see if that helps or hurts me long term in value and link karibo it's kind of interesting yes it's like a special gold version of it just like the ultras that we got in dual power and the shonen jump but then the picture because it's regular red that, that looks interesting i gotta say I rather like that because we can actually see the artwork nice and clear though so that's nice i think there might have been a common reprint i just don't remember i missed it if there was last pack of this box miracle contact nice card cyber dragon core we got laundry dragon made nice to see these guys getting reprinted who knows maybe because they're reprinted now and cheaper i can pick up the deck finally and just play around with it for fun witchcrafter should actually be up very soon if they're not already we got miscellaneous saurus this card actually i think looks very cool in gold rare this might be my favorite one i've seen thus far from our pulls got mind control nice and caligo claw crow if you've not read this card because he's just like a random guy i think he's from like a starter deck in the zexel era if you have a dark monster you could just drop this guy from your hand and you can only summon one per turn this way so if you're playing in phantom knights for example it's a dark monster so you can make bardiche with it if you happen to be doing like raid raptor stuff actually my brother's playing around with a uh, PK Raid Raptors. This guy is a winged beast as well, so it synergizes with both archetypes. So if you haven't looked at this card yet, go ahead and definitely do so. We're gonna go ahead and open at least this third one here. Heck, maybe I'll just go ahead and open all these here. Oh, who knows? Like, especially because this was something that I opened on my channel originally. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna speed things up just a little bit here to ensure we're able to get through the rest of these in a timely manner. We won't be like, you know, 30 minutes by the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get cracking. Nothing looks crimped immediately. We got another Morningstar, Gear Gigant. We got Gaia the Dragon Champion. This is a card I don't know why it's in this set, even with the new Gaia support, unless they just wanted like a fusion monster to show, in which case I'm wondering why didn't they do Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon? Who knows? Uh, but we have that here. It's a cool card. I just don't know why. Gilko, another Golden Lord. That's very good. Maybe I could play Eldritch if I pull a third one of these. Dark Lord Rebellion. Dark Lord Neston. On to the next pack. We gotta go ahead. Oh, what was that? That was a weird way for that to open up. It's like I pulled out a puzzle piece instead of opening a booster pack. Right off the bat, I could see Eater of Millions. I love that card's artwork, so very nice to be able to actually see it though i guess originally it was a common card so uh we would have been able to see that but a uh, nice card there dark lord contact barrier statue of the torrent lair of darkness Ooh, always uh nice to see that we got another dryden which i'm getting a little tired of seeing to be honest um chakanine and this time it's not like crazy crimped at the top so that's pretty cool Zodiac pack, I guess. Preparation of Rights. This is a good reprint. And then we got these two packs here, so I'll toss this to the side. Let's see here. We got Noble Knight Pelinor. We got Necro Valley Throne. What's this card do? Add a Gravekeeper's monster from deck to hand, like a Rota, or immediately after it resolves, normal summon a Gravekeeper's monster. You can only activate one per turn. This is interesting. I don't know if I've seen this card before. It's neat. I like it. Solemn Judgment. I think this card would have been hilarious if they did an alternate art of it, where it's like the Stratos, where he's like, at you going no um but alas we didn't get that we have domain of the true monarchs we got tour guide from the underworld with this other artwork and um as much as i like this other artwork i can definitely say after seeing this card in this rarity um i personally just don't like this i feel like the secret rare in the korean one we pulled was a lot nicer looking heck the ultra that we originally got from dual overload or I think it was dual overload the needle fiber set that was a lot cleaner than this mm, i don't know like this looks neat if you like 
reflected in light. But I, I just can't imagine myself playing with this type of a card in a deck. Like, it just feels really weird. Sky Palace, Gangaridai, and uh, Circle of the Fire Kings. I remember one of my friends from uh, university played Fire King, so it was kind of cool seeing that card in action for a bit. Good times. There can be only one. Draco Zack as a rare. Silent Angler. This card's funny. I was teching it in Rika. If you have water monsters or a water monster, you can just drop this from your hand, and you can't special summon from your hand for the rest of the turn. So, pretty interesting extender. The fact that he's a level 4 water means you can go for Bahamut Shark with this guy. Temple of the Six got Elder Entity Nutos. Finally, not just a super rare, but I think maybe it could have just stated as, as a super rare. I don't know. We got Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, my favorite artwork of the original Ghost Sisters there. Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala. So, uh, that's that box there. Two more of these to go. So far, all the packs feel very random, and I'm liking that. The fact that especially the rares we're pulling are just random cards that we have not seen yet, like Draco Sack, you know, that Necro Valley Temple that I haven't seen until today. Like, it's just a neat thing to be able to experience surprises in this game. So I'm glad I didn't get, like, a really good look at the entire set list and study up to the point where, like, nothing's surprising. Obviously, if you're trying to, like, you know, run a business or, like, you're trying to plan ahead, you know, it, there are benefits to doing that. I just feel that uh, sometimes it's fun to just be surprised, and that's what we're trying to do today. See if I could pull something that just makes me go, wow. There can be only one. Lost World. Artifact Lancia. Duplicate, but still a good one. We got Barrier Statue of Stormwinds. We got an Ash Blossom. I'll take one of those. We got Prime Monarch, and we got Link Karibo. So overall, that was a very solid pack, uh, full of cards that are useful all around. Union Hanger again. Barrier Stature of the Inferno. Gaia the Dragon Champion. Uh, please not a play set later. We got Machine Dupe as a rare, but it's a gold rare. That looks interesting. Torrent. We got another Trident. Please no more. I, I'm... I'm okay with this, but I think that's at least a playset already, so uh, no more, please. We got Mind Control. Maybe I'll use these over the dude ones. I didn't really like how those uh, Ultra Rares turned out in North America. They, they chip, literally chip. Uh, the first Monarch here got Inferno, Nurse Dragon Maid. I'm obviously not going to pull all of them to be able to play them, but I uh, got Torrent. Lose one turn. This card, man, I, I this card like had so much potential, but it ended up just like not being relevant after a short while, which was sad. Cyber Dragon Inferno. Infinity. Wow, when you have an Xyz monster, and I know we pulled a bunch, but like you can kind of see here just how bright that rainbow border looks on it, and it's on the counter of the card, so it's like not even supposed to be that way. Eh. <laughs> what can I say? As I go on, I can tell this isn't my favorite rarity. If it is something you really like, you know, more power to you. I think I rather like the gold rares more. <laughs> we have Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Coyote or Coyote, whichever you like to say. We got Union Scramble. Got original art tour guide from the Underworld. Still looks very clean, but I think I prefer that prismatic we pulled the other day. We got Utopia Beyond. I, I forgot about this card, so it's pretty cool to see that. Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder. Just random numbered cards here. Good old Rota. Add a level 4 warrior from your deck to your hand. Planet Pathfinder. And now we've come to this last one here. Trade in. Harpy's Feather Duster. Still pulling new cards. So that's kind of nice. Trying to feel the difference. I mean, like the card counter is a lot smoother. This middle part, like if you've not touched it before, is like the picture. It's like glossy and like lose one turn. Barrier Statue of Drought. Another polymerization. Caligo Claw Crow. Planet Pathfinder. Uh, I think Totally Awesome is a rare in this set. I remember when I saw that, that looked really cool. Not one I'm particularly needing, but I'd like to see that, because in an OCG, it originally was a rare like this, so. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, this feels like my first pack, other than Morningstar, like Gear Gigan X, the Ghost Ogre, Chateau. We got a second Laundry Dragon Maid, Tuning, and Sacred Sword of Seven Stars for that Dragon Ruler draw power. Can we pull a Blue Eyes or Dark Magician? That'll be our goal by the end of this box here. You got Union Scrambler, number 15, Gyoko, Chaos Dragon Leviathan with the Ultra Art that I am so familiar with. We got another Ghost Spell. We'll take her. Dark Lord Rebellion and Dark Lord Nasta. And it seems like those two cards like coming up together. So last pack. Can we pull one of the legendary monsters? We did pull Red Eyes. We gotta be happy for that. Magical Meltdown. Actually, that reminds me. It would be cool to pull Alternate Art Alistair. We'll see. We already got uh, one of our gold rares is uh, Artifact Lancia. And we got Barrier Statue of the Torrent. Ooh, I will take that. We got Alter Art, Opelosa, Bow of the Goddess, <laughs> Rip Bear. Or maybe this was before the bearer came into the picture. Or maybe the bear is some spirit created with the bow. Who knows? Like, all that matters is this is Opelosa, Bow of the Goddess. So this bow is all that matters. You know, even the goddess doesn't matter. Or maybe this isn't even the goddess. She's someone receiving 
the bow from the goddess whatever your your head cannon is on that but uh we got these cards preparation of rights is nice to see here as well so yeah we'll, we'll just go ahead and do kind of a recap of everything and uh, i'll try and bring everything a lot closer to the camera so you can really enjoy the details on these guys that looks kind of cool again more as a collectible thing i think and i was thinking like for extra deck this would work just fine but um i don't know something about the texture i just don't like like it feels glossy obviously you're putting it in a sleeve doesn't look initially like i pulled any big error cards which is nice and we don't have any issues with shipping or anything like north american dual devastator we got a bunch of cool cards nice selection of things so i do like that um some things feel slightly miscut on average it feels like the right border is just a little wider than the left border and it might be just something that happened from this specific production line overall i do think it was fun opening this display box because there was a nice mix of different cards even towards the end we ended up getting a variety of things that we hadn't pulled before and although we pulled you know tons of zodiac dridents in particular it wasn't all bad i think it was a good mix of everything we got an infinite impermanence as well got some ash blossoms and all those in here so overall i think it was a solid opening but definitely share down below what you feel about these gold rares, especially if you've handled these, as I'm sure many of you will have by this point. Just like, what do you think about it? I think it's a neat rarity for sure. I'm just not hugely as overjoyed about playing with these cards as I am just with the concept of, okay, Konami TCG tried doing this. I feel like the OCG did a bit better at executing the quality, especially with... You know, it not even being heard of that the OCG had huge problems with the entire text box not being legible or like Pleiades having Guy the Dragon Champion's name at the bottom. It's just ridiculous, which just makes you wonder. It's like, did they even have quality control on those products at all? Like, did they only do sampling quality control and then like they let all the issues go through? Don't get me wrong. I don't like this rarities overall look as much as I thought I would, but I will say the set is amazing. It's weird seeing infinite impermanence as another chase card yet again, but like just the cards in here are all useful pretty much, like from the rares to the gold rares that you can see here versus again, just like look at how bold and shiny the OCG version is. Now granted, this thing feels even harder to play in a deck than this card, I think, and maybe that was done by design. I kind of rather would have this thing as just a collectible. Put it in like a top loader or one of those like uh, magnetic cases. Just boom, seal it, done. Um, versus like this, it's kind of like halfway. Like, do I play it? Do I not? I don't know. Like, it feels thicker than normal, so I don't even know how that would go. But it's still interesting. And I think the biggest win of this set is just the alternate arts. Continuing that is a very good trend that I hope konami does for the long run because a lot of these classic cards especially they deserve it like they have a legacy in the game in the franchise itself between like the anime and just the fan base so like it really would be cool to see you know what happened there and then here are like the misprinted ones i have like you could see how crazy that zodiac shock and nine ended up being and you can see on the back as well like this one there's no question like anyone looking at this is going to be like wow but i rather like that like that looks like it's metal because of that gold rarity so uh unexpected unintended side effect but i like how that looks got uh my dolce knight's got like just a little bit of angled crimping so it's almost like they just messed up the lining of this card or maybe like it just shifted in the pack got zodiac dryden with just a little bit of crimping more noticeable on the back there than on the front but still present and just look at that gold luster that looks pretty cool um we got cosmo town with the same kind of thing on the front it's kind of there on the back whoa it's noticeable and we got a union hanger was a uh, very much crimped as well so once again i think fun set to open no doubt about it it's just uh what are you gonna do i am personally not gonna be hunting down the gold versions of these to play in my decks but to each their own it just may be someone's cup of tea so let me know what you guys think of this set and the rarity down below this is jd gaming hope you guys enjoyed as always and i'll see you guys next time that's it for now but feel free to grab one of these videos on your way out if you really enjoyed what you saw today remember to subscribe to jd gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh videos thanks guys this is jd gaming hope you guys enjoyed as always and i'll see you guys next time